Hey everyone, it's me, Doom Link, and welcome back to Doom Link's Life Hunts. We are here in Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate, and there's actually a decent number of people playing, which I was very pleased to find. I did a few things before actually beginning the VOD at this point, such as struggle to get the recording set up, deal with a disconnection, and also struggle to navigate the very small number of options that I had as far as what rooms I could join, in spite of the fact that there are actually a decent number of people online. What's happening is that there are a lot of full rooms, but particularly there are three passworded rooms, and I hate that shit. I'm not going to complain about it too much, but I'm really starting to get to the point where if I see a passworded room, I am just livid. There's almost no one playing, and then you've got the temerity to prevent other people from hunting with you. Fuck off. Now, if you've got a full group of four, that's fine. But, passworded rooms where you've got less than four people, I hate them. I think it's stupid. Of course, what I mean by that is, there's no potential for another person to join anyway, if you've already got a group of four, so the password ensures that no one takes that spot and has to be kicked awkwardly, or, you know, asked to leave. It's just more efficient. But putting a password on a room to prevent other people from joining when there is space for people to join is detestable. Looks like we've got Agnator. Standard Agnator, single quest. And what would be a fun choice? I suppose Greatsword. I'm in a Greatsword mood at the moment. And then after that, I'll do Longsword, then Switch Axe. One of the very rare occasions where I've actually decided in advance what weapons I'm going to use. <laughs> and there's a reason why. It appertains to the fact that I have actually... Well, I started this recording a while ago. <laughs> but the VOD is beginning at this point. But yeah, the previous... well the start of the recording that you won't see was a little bit stressed out because I was I was already in a room and I didn't want these people waiting for me so I was getting the recording set up as quickly as possible. I really have to try and prevent that. The logic behind it is that I enter rooms to see if they're good rooms and if they're good rooms then I'll start a live stream because the reality is I don't want downtime at the start of a live stream but the the catch is that if I haven't got it set up, then I'll have to set it up as quickly as possible without causing too much convenience for the people who are already in the room. But yeah. That's behind me now. And by the grace of something, or someone, some force, I have managed to have a G rank room. To hunt in. I was thinking that I wouldn't be able to get a room. <laughs> but no. We're here and we're hunting, and that's what's important. Denizen of the Molten Deep. It is the Molten Deep. He actually digs into the lava. I suppose swims into the lava. You don't dig... Well, no. Is lava thick enough to be dug through? Does that fit the definition of dig? I suppose so. I don't know. The difference between digging and wading definitely relates to the substance one is moving through, but whatever. Would you wade through lava, or would you dig through it? Maybe not solid enough, huh? Not sure. This is a very big Agnantor. I actually think this one's a gold crown large. Look at the size of the fucking thing. The irony is that I had actually hunted a gold crown large glacial Agnantor just before, off camera. Well, technically on camera, but it... <laughs> as far as posterity is concerned, it will not be on camera. Um, and I think it was smaller than this one. 
So this is, without a doubt, a gold crown large Agnator. And a considerably large one. My guess is that if I've already got a gold crown large Agnator, this one's probably going to be bigger. Yes, you're probably right, Takashi. Getting a turn around on the Agnaktor face is actually pretty easy to do. It just so happens that I didn't position myself properly there. That was a good claw break. I'd like to take a moment to express my disappointment that I'm not really able to record for Ultimate these days. Because as I'm hunting right here, I feel as if it would be really nice to play some for Ultimate. That's not to suggest that I'm not enjoying this. I do enjoy Free Ultimate a lot. It is my favorite Monster Hunter game. And I haven't played it all that much recently, so I'm enjoying myself for sure. But I would love to play for Ultimate. It's just that the recording process is not smooth at all. It relates to the emulation and how unstable it is. If I'm not recording, it's fine, but the emulator does not cooperate well with a system that is under pressure from recording through OBS. I don't know how to describe it. It puts the system in a certain almost vulnerable position vulnerable to any weird shit that might go on in the emulator and of course if I'm recording that's that's mine I don't want that I don't want the game slowing down at what is already 30 FPS as opposed to 60 and again my PC is entirely robust and perfectly good enough to run that game specs wise it's the emulator that is the problem and it is the emulation process that is the problem and so I do think at some point that will improve. So when it does, I'll record for Ultimate. At the moment it's too damn unstable. Someone has actually, for the first time I think ever on camera, oh no. You know what probably happened? It was probably an accident. I was going to say someone dung bombed the Agnator instead of the Urogan, but no, both were dung, so I can only assume that the dunging of the Agnaktor was an accident. Now, if the person was so foolish as to dung... This is a huge Urogan. Uh, maybe I'm going crazy. But if the person was foolish enough, and I didn't see this, but if they were foolish enough to dung the Agnaktor accidentally, and then, after having realized that it was dunged accidentally, threw a dung bomb at the Urogan, that person should get a grip or something and learn how dung bombs work. Um, what I was going to remark upon was the fact that, you know, dunging the Agnator is the better thing to do because the monster has been there for longer than the Urugan. You know, the Urugan just got in, so it makes more sense. It happened again! So who is... D I think there are two people dunging. I think there's one person who's taken the approach of dunging the monster who has been in the area the longest, which happens to be the better strategy, and then another person is just dunging the invading monster. So, there is not enough strategy here. There's not enough cohesion. Ooh. Not enough strategy. What I mean to say is that there's... Whatever strategy is being implemented is a dysfunctional one. Strangely, it feels like this hunt has dragged on a little bit. It might be because we've just... It's given me the sense that it's dragged on because we've had to chase this monster into two areas outside of its starting area, so... Yeah. We've definitely wasted a bit of time. 
Would have been a whole lot faster if we didn't dung both monsters. Does Angler, excuse me, does Uragan enter this area? I'm trying to remember if I've ever seen Uragan here in Area 8. I don't think I have. I'd have to try to recall all of my memories of playing Try. I don't think I remember ever fighting an Urugan here. I don't think he comes here. I don't know what the logic for that would be. It's too hot? I can't imagine that. He's happily walking around in lava down there, so... It would definitely be hotter here. You're getting closer and closer to the volcano. So... Yeah, maybe that's what it is. I don't know. If Rathalos is happy to fly around here, then surely Uragan would be happy to walk around here. So I don't know what it is about this area that Uragan doesn't like, but I just don't see him here. He's not interested. Maybe there's no food for him here. Maybe that's what it is. Or he's too far away from his food source. Because he does have an eating area, as you know. It's in area something. Forgot the number. But he does eat further south. So maybe this ends up being too far from his eating place. James is asking if we want to capture. I believe it is Marcus who will be making that decision. It is his quest. Marcus is not responding. Well... I don't know what we're doing, guys. Are we killing it or capturing it? At this stage, I think we're going to go for the kill. So, there you go. Don't know if any of you have bombs, but... Yeah, maybe not. Well, Marcus... I don't really know what to say to you. When the monster is asleep, it doesn't really help to put the trap far away from the monster. <laughs> the reason why you would place a trap far away from a monster is if it's awake to start with and posing a risk to you while placing the trap down. But if the thing's asleep, it makes no sense to do that. See, I don't know if he wanted to capture or not, but yeah, didn't happen. It probably looks as if I ignored his wishes or something. If he could be a little more communicative, that would help. Might carve this Eroctor. May as well. I'm not used to being unable to move at the end of a quest. It's bothersome to me. That is my sixth Wyvern Stone in this game. I'm not in need of an Ancient Shard. Guys, no. No thank you. So I'm not sure what the protocol is for posting quests in this room. I suppose we'll leave Sol to coordinate that. Oh, sorry, I'm not in a room with Sol. I'm getting confused. I tried to join a room with Sol and it didn't work out. <laughs> so in actual fact, no, it's James who will be coordinating that, no doubt. Hey, Tech. Don't know who Lord Sue is. I've heard of someone named Lord Zeu, but not Zu. Or Sue in this case. S U. Very interesting. Whose turn? It's your fucking room, man. 
come to think of it. Uh, is my keyboard in working order? Probably. Okay. So we'll turn that sucker on. Well, I guess it's on, yeah. Um, skip me. I can't type on this keyboard. <laughs> Because it's uh, all the keys are in this different position to the keyboard that I use now. So whenever I go to type on it, I just typo. Constantly typing. <laughs> Two of them are asking if Jack wants to post. Jack, I hope you've posted something good. If it's something crap, like something not G rank, I'll be pretty annoyed. The creeping venom, very well. And Jack is doing key quests apparently, which is fine. It's funny, there was a time when you could make a room called HR6 Key Quests and you'd get a full group of HR6 people to do them with you, but that was a long time ago. Sure. No, actually I said I would do Longsword, didn't I? And I don't seek to renege on that. Well, it wasn't really a promise, but it is what I said that I'd do. Um... Yes. Should I... I feel like I need a general use armor set that has high gradient plugs. But it wouldn't... No. It would interfere with my Honed Blade set being my main general use armor set, so... Well, the irony is that I used to have a general use armor set with high-grade earplugs. But whatever. Fire. What's our fire longsword? Add tradition. It's nice to see the old tri quest names like the Creeping Venom. I suppose if you've got a good quest name, keep it. Defender Low and Slider. And I'll put that voucher away. There's something very nice about the armor James is wearing next to his dual blades. Just seems appropriate in some way. Looks good. I wonder if this armor is fully upgraded. Because I really, despite the fact that I really should have all pieces fully upgraded for all my armor sets, I don't. I actually don't. Because I was running out of true armor spheres for a while. Probably still running low. So, I should probably take some time to check to see what I can upgrade and actually furthermore see if I have any true armor spheres to spare. Which I may or may not have. The interesting thing, as I recall, when you readied up in try, you couldn't move. I do remember that. But for some reason, they let you move when readied up in this game. And yet, much like try, and I believe they are the only two games that are like this, when you've completed a quest, you can't move. It's strange because they are the only two games where you can't move when a quest is completed, so it would have been an active decision on the part of Capcom to make it so that you couldn't move at the end of the quest, and that begs the question as to why they made that change. 
what's wrong with being able to move after the quest is completed? You know, where you're waiting for the quest complete thing to come up on the screen. Why do they make it so you can't move? I'm not sure. So, this is not Portable 3rd, so Giganox will start in the Tri location. In Portable 3rd, he starts up there. That was one of the things that Portable 3rd decided to do. They decided to switch up the starting areas for some monsters. Which is fine. God, look at the range of effectiveness of that stupid attack. Look, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but this looks like a big Giganox. I don't know what it is. All the monsters are looking big right now. Maybe I'm just going crazy. <coughs> it definitely could be the case. Oh dear. That was actually good. I was hit. Precisely at the moment I was sheathing my weapon, so that was like an animation cancel. It was all intentional, all intentional. I find Longsword to be a really good weapon to use high grade airplanes with, because it gives you that opportunity to get your spirit gauge all the way up. Or at the very least, it helps a lot in doing that. Please don't dung bomb it. Come on, James! Take one for the team, man. Well, what I mean is that you take damage for the team, right? He wasn't at risk of death there, as far as I'm concerned. His defense wasn't that bad. Or isn't that bad. He could have mashed all the way to almost break free of it. And then, once he was close to death, he could mash out. Just get that last little bit. Fucking hell! I'm telling you, I'm not going to be able to get my longsword charge up because of this stupid monster roaring the whole time. And Marcus, or rather James, thwarted my attempt to get the charge up during that pin. Yeah, good on you, Giganox. You're being very annoying today. Two people have been sent out of the area. Well, I'm not going to engage Giganox at the doorway. We want to move him away from that if we can. Imagine if that... <laughs> That's really funny. James got caught by Giganox as he came in, and the process of being pinned down by Giganox sent him into the other area, so Giganox had nothing to suck on. That's really funny. I've never seen that. Oh, that's a new one. Okay, can I maybe get my longsword charge up, or are you going to roar? You're not going to roar, but you aren't going to hit me with that. See, I only barely got my charge up. Unbelievable. Well, I only barely leveled up my gauge, I should say. That is the process that I've been trying to have success with. Yeah. I don't know what I got hit by, but I definitely got hit by someone. I must have been upswung by Jack. I don't know why you've chosen to place the trap now, but fine. Maybe he wants to go for a capture. Who knows?
Are you kidding me? What the fuck? I've never seen a monster basically stepping on a trap yet not being affected by it. Except for an Elder Dragon. <laughs> Maybe Giganox is an Elder Dragon. This is an Elder variant. Like the Shaguru Megala to a Gore Megala. What a waste of time trying to get this thing into a trap. It's only going to last for a moment. Get in it. You fucker! Oh my god. Marcus has successfully nuked the DPS of this team by placing a totally unnecessary trap far away from the monster. Anyway, no fucking comment. What a jerk, says Jack. Well. I guess. If you could stop jumping around the place, that would be awesome. Let's hit him out of this. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Now I'm up to the red. Well, I think it's time to die, Giganox. I think your time has come. I'm avoiding the head because I'll be bouncing off it, I think. Even with white. very important that you have antidotes for this hunt. They really try to punish you with not having antidotes for the G-rank Giganox because it is double poison that you are given when you are poisoned by him and you lose health really quickly. He got his ass swinging in my face. Shut up, please. Okay, are we capturing or like, what are we doing? Capturing? <laughs> that only barely worked. Jack, who was throwing the tranks, was getting aggressively flinched by James. That's alright. I don't often find myself capturing Giganox anyway. <laughs> what a glorious hunt, thanks, says Jack. Okay, maybe maybe take it easy. Seemed like a fairly ordinary hunt to me. Giganox sleeping is kind of creepy. Well, not, perhaps not creepy, but definitely weird. Is that how he sleeps normally? He just lies on his back like that? That'd be pretty funny if so. Plenty of talons. No, that was not a big Giganox. Not at all. That wasn't even a Silver Crown, so I'm going crazy. Maybe it's because I'm playing on a big display, <laughs> which sounds stupid. You should be able to relate the size of the monster to the size of your character, and that should therefore not be cause for confusion whatsoever. But yeah. I definitely evaluated that incorrectly. That was a very standard size, Giganoth. I wonder why they don't have silver crowns for small monsters. I've never understood that. 
why go to the trouble of having a silver crown for a large monster, but not for a small one? Now, originally in Monster Hunter, back in first generation, you only had one crown. It was a large crown. You could either get silver or gold. And then in second gen, they added a small gold crown. But not, a sp not a small silver one, and they st stuck with that. They decided that small silver crowns were not important. Which begs the question of why large silver crowns are important and worthwhile. I really don't know. Couldn't say. What is this? Man, forget the fucking key quests. Forget the key quests. You need an armor set. I suppose he's playing fine, but what the fuck? You're literally here with a group, and instead of working towards an armor set, you're working on key quests. That's not what you should be doing. Just because you've got an end game high rank set doesn't mean that it's appropriate for D rank. In fact, it's really not. The guy's at like 460 defense, which is terrible. That's almost gunner defense. Oh yeah, I said that I was going to check my armor piece upgrades. Because this is one of my more frequently used armor sets, I will confirm that all pieces are fully upgraded. I think they are, but if they're not, then I'll fix them. No, that's fully upgraded. Good. I'm glad. It would be really stupid if this armor set wasn't fully upgraded. Seeing as though I use it so often. I'll be using Switch Axe for the next quest. Okay. Looks like I'll be using the Morales Switch Axe. Which is one of the less attractive of the Morales weapons, but it's still nice enough. It definitely still has a unique appearance. Crimsidian. I don't have any recollection of having used this exact weapon against a barrel. No recollection whatsoever of having done that. Oh, I took your, took your seat. The game really wasn't sure for a while there who, who should get it. I wasn't expecting to get it, actually. Apparently Marcus has given up his turn for Jack's benefit, so I suppose it's key quest time. And I do disagree that that's what we should be doing. I think we should be making an armor set for Jack. But you know what? I'm not going to tell him not to do it because it works in my favor to do different hunts each time rather than grinding the same monster. So, in a strange way, I would rather do this. Even though it's not really going to benefit Jack to enter endgame G rank with a fucking high rank set. As long as he doesn't play awfully, it should be fine for me. Good day. You didn't get a chance to dig into the mud, did you? I know you like to do... What? Oh, I have rock steady. Yeah. Totally forgot about that. I do have rock steady, just not high grade earplugs on this, so... So in other words, I do have raw resistance, but it doesn't work for all monsters. Everyone started really far away from me. I actually don't really like the switch axe gauge being so short and small. I prefer a larger switch axe gauge for sure. Oh fucking hell. Oh 
Well, Jack is... Wait, what did he get hit by? If he got hit by mud and took that much damage, then he is not going to have a happy home. He's not going to have a happy run through G. I'd really like to hear everyone's stories for, you know, how they found themselves playing this game in the year of 2022 and not having actually finished it yet. Like, what were they doing? What games have they played prior to this point? Did they just get a Wii U? Are they making a new character and made one in the past? I feel like it would be interesting, it's just that I'm too lazy to engage people in deep conversation. Well, not just it's not that I'm lazy to do it. It's just that I am streaming, and I would rather hunt, and I'm sure you people would rather that too. But it would be interesting to know just what has brought people to play this game now. I'm glad that they're doing it. It's not something that I'd complain about. It keeps the community strong. See, fuck this guy in his bloody mud. It doesn't add a difficulty factor, it adds a pure annoyance factor. That's what it is. Maybe it is a difficulty factor in that my DPS takes a heavy hit when I am covered in mud, but still. It's mostly annoying. I'm actually really quite surprised that I haven't dropped in sharpness level yet. This thing has a lot of purple. It's one of the good things about Morales weapons, really. Of course, that does require sharpness plus one in order to get the purple sharpness. Thank you for the life powder, although I don't know if it was... Well, maybe it was a life powder. I was thinking it could be wide range. You don't see many wide range support players these days. They were pretty common in tr James. For a second I thought he was just going to stand there and hope that someone would hit him. That's what it looked like for a moment. Took him a while to get out of it though. I guess he doesn't really have the process down. The uh, wide range support players were fairly common in Drive. Not super common, but more common than they are here. You never see them here, but in Try, you know, you see one every. I don't know. Third room or something? He's throwing less mud around now, at least. Actually, no, it's about the same. <laughs> Probably one mud glob less. Sorry if I hit you, James. Well, actually, no, you ended up flinching me, so I wasn't able to get this out as quickly as possible, but... Yeah, most of that ended up on the head. I was wanting to get most of it on the claws, actually. But whatever. down again, so I'll do another one of these, this time hopefully more accurately positioned, and it was more accurately positioned. EZPZ, literally the letters EZ and PZ. What a glorious hunt, thanks. You know, the impact of you calling it a glorious hunt really does start to wither away when you say it after every hunt. And furthermore, when you say it, when it's not a glorious hunt at all. What an ugly set from the front. He's perfectly matching until you get to the head. 
He's trying to have it match by making the the tuft of hair blue. There would be a word for that. The decorative hair that you have coming out the back of the helmet. There would definitely be a word for that. I don't know what it is. It is decorative or, you know, an aesthetic aspect to the helmet. It's possibly even ceremonial. It doesn't have any function as far as I'm aware. You can see that my box is full, that's why I've got these red marks here. Maybe I'll have to address my box just to see what's going on with it. The reason why it goes from full to not full, without me actually putting any new materials in the box, is by changing armor sets. So as I change armor sets, decorations leave and return to the box, which frees up space, and then obviously takes it away again. So, these things here. What am I not in need of? There was a time when I had so many more bone husk S and L and husk berries in here, but I just can't afford to have them in there anymore. There is too much of a premium on space. I don't know. I don't remember what popfish do. Looks like I've got three stacks of popfish. I just don't remember what they're used for. It's certainly a shot combination material, but I don't remember what the shot is. Got a lot of pale extract. See, I don't want to cut back on wyvern fangs and claws either, because they're good for shot combinations. Fuck. I mean, I know that I'm not taking any more if I ever get them at the end of a hunt, but still... <laughs> As I play solo, it's going to get a whole lot worse because I'm going to be getting more of these sorts of materials. I'm going to have to actually get very strict with my box, about as strict as I get with my Freedom 1 box. Because, again, I'm going to start getting these sorts of materials and I'm not going to have space for them. At all. So either I trade them immediately, or I find space to store them, and I think I'd rather find space to store them. The hoarder in me would prefer that. I'd like to amass these materials, these items, and then trade with them when I have more of them in the future. Oh, you know what? I can cut down on Conqueror's seals for sure. I'm just going to make a single stack of those because I don't need more than a single stack. I don't even. I probably wouldn't even need more than ten. <laughs> I don't think I'm using them anymore. But yeah, I'm definitely getting rid of those. It's strange how you can't sell them for anything. Why have they decided that you can't sell them for money? Is it to? Uh, ensure that people don't find themselves tempted to sell them? Is that why? Maybe it is. It's funny, I have no reason to keep the Far East Sword, for example. Or the Fierce Sword. Like, I don't, I don't need these. But it's a... It's actually a way of seeing how many times I've done that quest. So I know that I've completed the weapon for this one. I believe this is an indication that I've done the quest seven times. So, that is assuming that I needed five for the weapons, so... Yeah. What's the plan, gents? Are you shitting me? I think we've established that you're the one posting. Jack is not really paying attention. I mean, he maybe he's being courteous in that he's not presuming that he's just going to be the one guy posting the whole time. He instead needs confirmation of it, but... I think it's quite clear at this stage that you are the guy who's posting. The fact that no one's posted anything and the fact that you... The fact that none of us except for you want to post anything really shows that it's all you. 
I'm not sure. Do you want it in writing? Would you like me to prepare a treatise on the matter? Anyway. So, fire again. We've been fighting a lot of fire weak monsters. Well, there were two off camera before I recorded this. That was Glacier Like Nactor and Ludroth. So, maybe to your eyes, there haven't been as many, but. You know, for me, there have been a lot. Jade Baroth, huh? I'm trying to think if I should bring this hunting horn, because I don't know if anyone's using elemental weapons. I have to check. I don't think Jack is. And Marcus might not be. Unfortunately, this horn is just useless unless people are using elemental weapons. Oh my god. James is bringing Thunder Dual Blades to a Jade Baroth quest. I don't know why. In fact, I think he's just used the same Dual Blades the entire time. Why? He's like Hunter rank 473. So, why is he using those weapons on every quest? I don't understand it. If he's too lazy to change weapons, he should... Equip a uh, Brachydeus weapon. I'll bring a fire gun, lads. Huh. Yes, this is the. See. As soon as I saw the digitality without Sharpness Plus One, I realized, wow, I can't use that. And that is no doubt why I created this gun, lands. And the funny thing is, I only made it somewhat recently, like within the last 12 months. Probably about seven months ago I made it. This is, by the way, the first recording of Free Ultimate in 2022. Which is very nice. I'll get Ultra Lucky Cam. Not that I'm in need of anything, as we've very clearly established. And I got Pyro anyway. Sadly, the pyro does not affect Gunland's shells, but still. I don't think there is a food skill that affects Gunland's shells, is there? Not that I'm aware of. Only armor skills. Specifically artillery. Previously called gunnery. I do like the look of the Agnaktor Gunlance in this game, as opposed to its appearance in Portable 3rd, because it actually has some dark accents, whereas it didn't, <laughs> obviously, in the Portable 3rd version. It looked a little bit too cartoony. This looks a bit nicer, the colours are more balanced this way. Not sure what Marcus is doing. He needs a written invitation to ready up on the quest. Seemingly. As far as I'm aware, Jack is playing fairly well. I haven't noticed him being on the edge of death constantly. He may very well be on the edge of death constantly, it's just I haven't noticed. He hasn't really died all that much. Maybe not even at all. I think someone died in a previous quest, but I don't think it was him even. So, he's doing fine for now. It is absolutely true that you don't have to worry about defense if you don't take hits. <laughs> Like if the monster doesn't hit you, defense is irrelevant, but I think most people will agree that defense is useful. But yes. As long as he plays properly, he doesn't have to worry too much. 
and I don't have to worry either. Although I do still stand by the statement that he really should be making armor instead of doing key quests right now. Why are you not engaging the monster? You don't want to solo it? For the very short length of time that it would take for us to get in here. Oh, Marcus. Why are you placing a trap when there are only two out of four people here to take advantage of the trap? Now, admittedly, he's improving in some regard. Instead of placing the trap so late into the hunt that the monster is at risk of leaving the area, he's placing the trap immediately. Now that's great. It's good to place the trap immediately, but not so immediately that no one's there to take advantage of the fucking trap. Seriously. That's kind of defeating the purpose of placing a trap. You do it so that the team can hit the monster. If, <laughs> if the team is not there to hit the monster, then put the trap away. It really is as simple as that. It's not game sense, it's common sense as far as I'm concerned. I really should have used that trap as an opportunity to do a wipe and fire, but I've talked about this before. I, as a consequence of having played a lot of Generations Ultimate, am no longer in the habit of doing wipe and fire at my earliest convenience. It's just not part of my habitual gun lance play anymore. And I hate that. The reason why is because you don't want to do that in Generation Ultimate. You actually need to charge up your heat gauge a little bit before doing Wyvern Fire. So as a result, I'm not even taking opportunities as they arise, such as that trap. So technically speaking, Generation's Ultimate has made me a worse Gunlance player for the, the earlier games. And it was always said, back when Double Cross was new, that Double Cross made you a worse hunter. But that was on account of the hunter arts and the styles. But it turns out that there is still something that has made me a worse hunter, at least in one regard, in Generation Ultimate, despite the fact that I do not engage with styles or... Well, I guess I do use hunter arts, but... I don't think that makes you a worse hunter. You can see that I almost have no hope of getting a full fucking combo out with this gun lens. Sad as it may be. Uh, why did I bother with that? It's just... Expending my sharpness unnecessarily. It sounds weird to say something like expending sharpness, but... It it almost works in, in a video game sense. It doesn't really make sense, does it, that shooting shells out of a gun lance would make the lance dull. It doesn't make any sense at all. Like, the edge of the blade of the gun lance should not be at all affected in its sharpness by shooting out of the barrel, out of the hollow interior of the weapon. And yet, it does. Now, I understand why it would work that way in a game sense, but it doesn't, doesn't make sense theoretically. But fortunately, and it is a good thing, that Capcom have chosen to do what makes less logical sense for the benefit of sensible game design. That's something that they struggle to do <laughs> in many other games and in many other regards. Sometimes they like to prioritize the concept rather than the game design. Which is one of the reasons why they've had balancing issues in the past. Well, it turns out that they can actually hit the monster there. I didn't want to go in there, I was a bit worried that I'd be sent out. I could be a real troll and shell them all into the other area, but I'm not that bad. 
I have another weapon fire so you can put off one I think I still hit James in the end. I really did point it as far away as I possibly could from you, but still wasn't good enough. I've not managed to get a single heavy shell off yet. Which is a shame. But the monster's almost dead, so that's not much of an issue. James is asking if we want to capture. Why do you keep asking that question? Fine. <laughs> okay, great. Double the trap. Double the effectiveness, right? You're wasting a pitfall trap totally unnecessarily, man. I don't care who you are, but pitfall traps are always valuable. Always. You can't buy nets or spiderwebs in this game, as far as I recall. So, if you could, that would be great, but I don't think you can. So. The fact that that guy, purely at the, the query of James, as to whether or not we're going to capture, is willing to waste a pitfall trap to go for a capture that maybe Jack didn't even want. It turned out that Jack did want it, but Marcus wouldn't have known that because Jack actually registered his interest to capture by placing a trap himself. And had Marcus noticed that, he wouldn't have placed his own trap. So, yeah, dumb. Don't waste your pitfall traps. I don't have any, <laughs> okay? I don't have any pitfall traps. Literally none, as I recall. So, yeah. There you go. It almost hurts to see someone wasting them like that. Also, hello, though. Got another large wyvern stone. I'm surprised I've got so much J. Barth stuff. At least in regards to the Cortexes. And that one trank I threw has been, well, accounted for, I suppose. Yeah, I don't mind capturing. It doesn't bother me. I just don't know why James is so interested in doing it himself. I don't understand James at all. He's using Abyssal, Lagiocruz, Dual Blades against all the monsters that we're fighting. It's not really an appropriate weapon to use for all hunts, is it? It's very elementally focused, so... Yeah. Yeah, I think I... I think I don't have any spider webs or nets or anything like that. The reason why is because I haven't done much gathering in this game. Like, I really haven't. Because so much can be purchased. The things like spiderwebs, which can't be purchased, just run out. It is what it is. I mean, I've played the game for a period of time that has led me to run out of things like that. For a length of time. It's caused me to run out of that sort of thing. So, I don't... Yeah, not a single pitfall trap, not a single spiderweb or net. So I am out. Spiderweb's easy through the farm. Um, it might be, might be third gen. I can't remember. I'll give the farm a try. I never use the damn farm. That's the point. Where would I get? Spider webs from, I suppose insect thickets, well not thickets, but you know, like multiplying insects would probably give me spider webs, possibly. Farm request, cultivate. Hello. I don't remember which of these would give me spider webs. I'm sure one of them would. Logically it would be insects, wouldn't it?
Well, how about I multiply some thunderbugs? I've only got insects up to level 2, which is not great. Might add some funky pheromones and I'll have 5 cycles. And that'll do me. That'll be a bit of a test run. See, I have no business not using the farm, given that I can actually access it from the, the cat in the online area. Thunder on the tundra. So... I don't think they have a common elemental weakness, so I'll probably just use raw. I'm sure they do have a common elemental weakness, it's just that I don't take note of secondary and tertiary weaknesses, elementally speaking. I have internalized the primary weaknesses of all monsters, unless the secondary is very, very close to that of the primary in terms of its effectiveness. So, you know, monsters like... Nagakuga being almost equally weak to fire as they are weak to thunder. So. And Jen Moran being as weak to dragon as he is weak to ice, and Devil Joe being as weak to dragon as he is to thunder. So, that sort of thing. Looks like you either farm for spider webs in the Misty Peaks or you trade for pitfall traps with the Argo CC captain. The latter is what I have done. I always traded for traps from him. That's where I got my pitfall traps. Now I don't have any at the moment because I haven't traded with him in ages, so. <clears throat> yeah. I am poor when it comes to that stuff. What would I like to use? You know what I don't have in this game? A really high raw lance. Now this is pretty high raw. I'd like a Diablo's lance in this game. Should I try making one? I wonder if, uh, wonder if the black Diablo's lance is in this game. Probably is, you know. Longhorn spear. I bet it upgrades from some other crap a bit. Oh no. I don't have Fusey more, and I bet I don't have Slick Axes either. What a shit show. No Fusey more. Well. Marcus has left. Because James said that he would be AFK for 10 minutes. <laughs> well. If he's going to be AFK for 10 minutes, this will give me an opportunity to mine some Fusium. Where's the best place to get that? High Rank Volcano? I'll give High Rank Volcano a try. Yeah, James being AFK for 10 minutes is really advantageous to me right now. Let's do some mining. Now, I've probably got nowhere near enough space for a mining run, but let's do it. Yeah, I wonder if um, G rank would have been better to get fuse him. Whatever. I'm sure high rank would be just fine. I don't think it's... Look, I've done plenty of G rank mining, so I, I do feel that one of the reasons why I don't have much in the way of Fusium is because I haven't done much high rank mining. <laughs> so that's my guess. My memory of Union Ore, which is what Fusium used to be called, is that it's more high rank than G, so... Yeah, I'm gonna give this a try. Mining with Doomlink, when was the last time, right? Human memory is insufficient to remember things that happened so far in the past. So far back in the past. And this is a weird thing, I've never understood this, how these nodes fuse together, like, I do personally think that it's a glitch, I don't think it's intended for two nodes to appear on top of each other in the same place, but it happens very often, that's just standard in the volcano. You, sir, can fuck right off.
I'm thoroughly displeased with the results of my efforts right now. I'm mining absolute garbage. Mystery charms. Rarity one fucking charm. Really. I'm not here for charms, but I'll tell you what I'm really not here for. It's mystery charms. I don't want a shining charm either. I could have kept the firestone, but... Yeah, this is exactly why... Mining without enough space sucks. This is really crap. A cantor visited the port, okay. Fuck off, you stupid creature. I'll say hello to the girl. Now, I would take the time to explain to a cantor who's just joined that the host is going to be AFK for another five minutes, but I couldn't be bothered. Hey! Very good. I'm keeping the coal for some reason. I want resource points. Because I don't have any. I'm assuming that it converts to resource points, or maybe it just converts to money. I don't know. Should be resource points. Oh, Jack is nice enough to explain to a cantor that James is AFK. Which is very good. At least I've got one fusium. You know, I didn't even check to see if I had slick axes, but I'm almost... I'm entirely assured of the fact that I don't. I haven't done the quests that drop them in this game. Admittedly, I don't even remember where you get slick axes in this game. Of course, slick axe is the f third and fourth gen name for expand pickaxes. Yeah, hopefully I do. Let's cross our fingers, right? The mining process definitely takes longer when you don't have space. You really should be taking these time warns, shouldn't I? It's kind of silly to pass them up. Well, I'll get rid of Dragonite. I'm not in need of Dragonite right now. I don't even like that Pokemon. Alright. This is the... the moment of truth. I'd say there's a good chance that I'll get two in this area. Fucking hell. Well, I'd rather Firestones than Carbolite. Should have come to that decision a while ago, but... <laughs> yeah. I'm not in need of rush shards. I'm sure I don't have many rusted weapons as opposed to worn weapons, but... I'm not such a completionist that I'd want that crap. The rusted weapons suck. Mm, earth crystals are probably worth taking, possibly. No. I want my coal. This is turning out to be a bit of a sad venture. Volatile coal, huh? Well, I do want my resource points. You keep away, Heroctor. Well, that sucked. I got one fusim out of all of that. And the good thing about using a Farcaster in this situation is that I've literally just created a space for the poor pass ticket. So, that's good. Yeah, it converts to Zenny. <laughs> Not resource points. That sucks. Oh well. I haven't seen that screen in a long time. Looks good in this game. What? You can get slick axes from the secret area mining nodes. I have no recollection of that. Hmm. Didn't know you got them from there. Well, at this stage, even if slick axes are fairly rare, I think for the sake of convenience at this stage, I'd be happy to 
use two of them for Fusey more. I'll check if I have any. I don't think I have any. I really don't think so. James is still AFK. He said that he'd be gone for 10 minutes, but... Oh god, a Cantor's using Kelby Deershot with the standard Giganox setup. Fucking hell. If he chooses to leave because he doesn't want to wait, then all the better. I don't really want to hunt with someone like that. Alright, moment of truth. No. Slick axes will appear here, next to the regular pickaxes, and I don't have any. So, that's annoying. Hmm. I actually don't have the Brachydeus Lance, I don't think. No. Funny, isn't it? Well... Shiera Vitalica. That's a weird name. In the words of Linebeck. I'd do another run, but no. Nah. I apparently don't have any bug hoppers. I wonder why. Might have something to do with the fact that I don't fish at all. Yeah, I'm so sick of slime in this game. I only made slime weapons for the ones that... Well, actually, I did make a switch axe. I did make the Brachydeo switch axe, which was weird. Yeah, I made the sword and shield, dual blades... What else? I seem to recall making the light bow gun. Um... Yeah, that's, that might be it. Of all the Moss Thunder games where Brachydeos appears, this is the one game that I forged the least number of Brachydeos weapons. And I think the reason why is because of how broken slime is, and also because of how overused it is here. So yeah. That is the way it is. Anyone want to arm wrestle? I'll only go at 50% capacity. It'll be a casual meeting of... Um, well, I was going to say clashing of swords, but you know. Yeah, I'll go at 50%. Let's see if you can beat me at 50%. I'll be very casual about it. I'm not going to go hard. He almost got me. You could see it. Poor bastard. I don't think I've ever done it so casually. You want to do it again? GG. I'm sort of imagining him like really sweating, trying to beat me, and I'm just sort of casually sitting here. Wouldn't it be fucking funny if you got a world player to do the arm wrestling here? They'd, pl they'd just be pressing the A button. <laughs> it would be really funny. They'd get absolutely thrashed by everyone. Why can't I win at the barrel game? It's because you're pressing A, you dickhead. And nothing else. Come on. Come on, man. Can you do it? Oh, come on! Poor oh, guy. Yeah, I've had my fun. Mm. 
the way I was just doing it, I'd be getting out of a monster's pin attack really slowly. <laughs> That's how slow I was doing it. Well, it goes to show how terrible the people you face are, then. and I don't know if you played Try at all, but I guarantee you wouldn't have won doing that back in that community. That community had some pretty intense fucking players. If any person wants to know how, how it works, it is the same as the, um, the mashing system for getting out of a pin attack. There is an invisible progress bar, and whoever gets to that progress bar, like whoever gets to a certain point in the progress bar first, will will win the arm wrestle. Now, if you want to press the A button and nothing else, versus actually pressing as many buttons as you can as quickly as you can, you'll you'll find when getting out of a pinned monster attack that you'll be doing it much slower. You beat me that way. I was slipping off the controller like an idiot, that's why. <laughs> sometimes sometimes when I go hard, it um it just doesn't work at all because I'm actually slipping off the buttons and not hitting them properly. Uh what was it again? Shit. It's another one of these situations. Yeah, okay. This is the one that I wanted a raw lance for. What would be appropriate? A slime weapon, really, but... Well, what raw weapons do I have? Do I have the Diablo's Horn Sword in this game? Probably not. It's incredible that I don't have that. Let's use the Eisenfaust. <laughs> That'd be funny, wouldn't it? I have to bring high grade earplugs. This is this is gonna be funny. Using this weapon unironically is just it's not recommended. In other words, if you actually want to deal good damage, don't use this weapon. But I'm I'm using it anyway. No one ever uses the damn thing. What? Oh, you're right, yeah, I completely misread that. Straight, I was not properly looking at that. I actually thought it was two Giganox monsters as well. Did not look at it properly. Do I have null berries in here? I should. Yeah, I've got some null berries. I remember it was thanks to you that I could farm some. <laughs> it sounded out of key for some reason. Alright. We'll start with Giganox if we can. Does he start where he should be starting? No, he's over here. Can't believe I'm using this awful greatsword. What's great about it is that it is as bad as it looks. It doesn't look like a damaging greatsword, does it? I'm sure it does at least sort of decent damage. But you know, that poor sharpness would probably end up having the effectiveness of a, a weapon with maybe 1,100 raw, but with purple sharpness. 
Jack says capturing is okay for either of them. I really tried to shield that in time, but it may very well be the case that I wouldn't be able to shield it in time. No, sorry, it may be the case that even if I were to shield it, the paralysis would hit me through it. It's fun using this weapon though. What is going on? Stop fucking paralyzing me, you bastard creature. Oh, that's right, we've got a Cantor, the Kelby Deershot Wonder Boy on our team. I almost forgot. Fear not, ladies and gentlemen. We have a professional in our midst. Oops. Oh, it starts at white shardless. Fuck me sideways. This is not as bad of a weapon as I fucking thought. I thought it started at blue. Well, I'm just going to keep sharpening up to white. That's actually not too bad. I mean, the, the obviously the negative affinity is fucking awful, but... If this thing actually has white sharpness, you better believe that I'm... going to use this with the intention of dealing decent damage. I just have to hope that I don't get negative crit. But yeah, this is pretty fucking good. And actually, I do have a critical eye on this set, don't I? Yeah, so I currently have negative 40 affinity. There you go. Yeah, this fucker is limping. There you go. I'd like to con I'd like to entirely withdraw what I said before about a great sword dealing 1,100 raw, but with purple sharpness would deal about as much damage as this one. Because the white sharpness is actually kind of fine. Not as good as purple, obviously, but still very good. Look at that. Get fucked. This great sword's actually pretty good. <laughs> Provided you have Sharmus plus one. And you're lucky enough to avoid negative crit. To be honest, you could have an armor set purely dedicated to dealing as much damage with this great sword as possible. So that would be Critical Eye plus three, Sharmus plus one, Challenger plus two, and then maybe an extra skill if you can get it in. Oh, and focus, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Use focus with it. Don't, don't be that guy. You know, the problem with that is that it wouldn't have Rocksteady or High Gradient Plug, so I don't know. I don't know about it. But the point is, if you had Challenger plus 2 and Critical Eye plus 3, that should get you into positive affinity. And... yeah. That would make it a good weapon. I don't think I'll be making it up. Unfortunately, I don't have enough armor set slots to make an armor set purely dedicated to the Eisen Files. It's not happening. This is not the sort of game where I can do that. I wish it were, but it's not. Yeah, managed to get him. It was a negative crit though. I would love to cut a tail with this. It does deal cutting damage. It shouldn't, but it does. I wonder if Capcom would ever consider making, you know, an impact greatsword. That would be kind of cool. They've never really played around with that. They've always had impact and cutting damage be married to a weapon type. They've never changed that within weapon types. Like, you know, have a hammer that deals cutting damage. There are a number of hammers that are actual blades. It would be really cool to have those actually deal cutting damage. Now some people are going to say, oh, well, why would you use a hammer that doesn't deal KO damage? There's no point in a hammer. Well, 
I don't know. I think it would be kind of fun. Why that has never crossed Capcom's mind, I'll never know, but... Swapping around impact and cutting damage on weapons of the same weapon type, I think, would be a really fun way to revitalize the system. Now, would that ruin some sort of well-established balancing in the game? I don't know. But I'd give it a try. I would definitely give it a try. It would be better than shitting on the other systems that they've shat on, like the skill system. Well, yeah, the Hunting Horn does have a cutting damage attack. That's fairly well known. As does the... Um, bow. And of course, Sword and Shield has impact capabilities. The Shield Bash. And the Great Sword Slap when you roll in 4th Gen. So yeah, I mean, they have given weapons capabilities, I just mean actually making it so that the default damage dealt by a particular weapon will have a different sort of damage. Yeah, Gemmaran Hammer could work in that way. Hello, Tosh. Oh, whoops, didn't mean to take that. I'll have to make sure I sell that. But yeah, I actually have a newfound respect for this greatsword. I thought it... I thought it went to blue sharpness as a maximum. It had such a tiny sliver of white that I didn't even see it. You know how when you've got sharpness plus one, it actually has this visual effect? See that outline? That visual... well, you can actually see the white sharpness there, admittedly. But yeah. And it turns out the weapon's actually not horrendous. It's still probably not the best. Well, it's almost assuredly not the best raw greatsword in the game, but... It's not as bad as I thought. And you know another great thing about it? You never see other people use it. Just one of those weapons that I've probably only seen, except for the times when I've used it, which in turn encouraged other people to use it themselves, I think I've only seen it used once by another person. A person who has independently made the decision to use it. That's how rare it is to see it. I don't know if I want to do this quest. Is it one at a time? I don't think it is. If it were one at a time, it would be very easy, but I don't think it is. Well, Tigrex isn't in this game, sadly. Um, oh yeah, that's right, this game has the Sarah Symmetry, so of course this is not the best Raw Greatsword. Of course not. Sarah Symmetry is the best raw greatsword in the series. Hands down. Um, what am I doing? I could use this, I could use it again. I could use this greatsword again, why not? But is high grade earplugs necessary? Let's find out. Are any of these monsters capable of the no. Oh no, Diablos is. Diablos has a raw that requires high grade earplugs, but he doesn't do it all that often, so it'll be fine. Diablos isn't one of those monsters that's really worth equipping high grade earplugs just to avoid his raw, because he only does it very occasionally. So, Rocksteady will do. Why is 
So now that I've got negative 50% affinity, it's almost going to be more important for me to do critical draw or to try to sheathe it as much as I can. Stranger, huh? Sorry, guys. Using a voucher when everyone's eaten. That's the Doom Link special. This might be my last hunt. We'll see. Start with Jade Barrel, says James. Well, I'm assuming he's gonna drop smoke, but just in case he doesn't, I will be bringing smoke bombs. I'm not going to check the box, I'm going to get a smoke bomb out as quickly as possible. I'm almost certain... Well, no, I'm not almost certain that James is going to throw a smoke bomb. I usually spawn in these quests sooner than he does. So... Yeah. I... No, it didn't work. Fucking shit, man. Oh, did it? No, it didn't work, did it? Yeah, see, fucking shit. I did try. There's nothing I could have done. It just so happened that it's one of those awkward situations where it doesn't work. Really. Well, I did try. Oh, don't do a flash bomb when the smoke bomb's up. Yeah, they were both staring at the door when I came in, so. One of those awkward situations. We have to try and kill this thing as quickly as possible. The reason why James recommends that we start with Jay Balth is because he would die much quicker than Diablos would. Look, with the greatest of respect... If you're gonna throw a flash bomb, fucking aim it properly. Like, were you trying to flash... Oh, fine. I guess he wasn't trying to flash both, but... Yeah, I was going to say, is he trying to flash the anus of the jade barrel? To avoid this bloody ice. Now, yeah, getting a critical attack with this is pretty serious. That's some serious damage. Actually, I really should try to do a direct comparison between this greatsword and the Sarah Symmetry. It might actually be considerably worse than the Sarah Symmetry. Because if the Sarah Symmetry is sitting around 1,300, then, yeah, this thing's a waste of time. I'm not having a good day right now. I don't like that this thing's fucking alive. What am I saying? I don't like that it can see us. I can't do anything. It keeps hitting me. I hate this monster. I mean, Greatsword is a terrible fucking idea. When fighting two monsters at the same time. Absolutely atrocious idea. I don't know what it is, Black Diablos, but you seem to have quite a... a fixation on me. I'd really like it if this fucking Baroth could die. I can't greatsword this. This is beyond my capacity as a greatsword user. Every opportunity, like I'm literally waiting for opportunities, but every time there is an opportunity, something like an angry Diablos interrupts it. I tried to go for that charge, but I mean, what would you have me do? All of my opportunities are going to shit. What an awful fucking hunt. Whose idea was it to do this quest? That's what I want to know. It's stupid. It doesn't achieve anything. It's a crap quest. I never like these ones. Whose fucking idea was it? Don't throw fucking sonic bombs when the monster's in rage. Excuse me, but if the monster's... Are you taking the piss or what? Hello, Arexion. Yeah. 
anyway. I've got smoke bombs for the next round anyway. Let's say anyway twice in the most redundant way possible. Why am I not able to hit you? It's not a happy day for me as a great sword user. There are no giblets. This is a female monster. Black Diablos is one of the few guaranteed female monsters in the series. So I would struggle to castrate it. I sort of want to put down a trap. Yeah, thanks. It's so refreshing that there isn't some fucking auto message saying, I'm placing a trap. Because then, you know, the message doesn't go out and then it's interrupted and then... Why are you throwing these sonic bombs? It's not funny. Contribute to the hunt, you fucker. You've been using the same dual blades. Thunder dual blades. Irrespective of the monster's elemental weakness. Stop being such a dork. Try contributing. It might be a fun new thing to give a chance in the Monster Hunter series. Alright. At least we're getting supplied with Mega Versions. So the smoke bomb will go down as this body despawns. Fist her. You've got a, a giant fist, yes. Well, I don't think I'll be fisting her with this. It would hurt though, could you imagine? I'll put the smoke bomb down in the middle because I don't know where they spawn. I'm almost concerned that Akanto is going to be outside the smoke bomb. We'll see what happens. Alright. Now, uh, oh great, bombs. James. No. I'm not doing it. No, I'm not doing it. I, I don't like these quests. And also don't like people like James who are just so fucking lazy. They are lazy human beings. The guy isn't even willing to bring a different weapon for each hunt. Which is fine. Use a fucking raw weapon, mate. Or a slime weapon, I don't know. Do what everyone else does in this game and use a slime weapon or something. Fucking cock of a human being. Alright. Any other rooms for me to join? Well, they're all on a quest, so... I'll probably finish up there. That was going to be my last hunt anyway. And we've passed the threshold of two hours, so... I don't know if that was a tiny Durambrus or not, but I don't think I'm in need of a Durambrus crown. At any rate, I would have liked for a better last hunt than that. That was stupid, but I do thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time I'm playing Monster Hunter or anything else you'd like to see of me that I'm recording. Any other game that I'm recording that you'd like to see. There you go. I'll see you then. Bye-bye for now.